Hello my friends, I've been looking for something interesting and special for you for a long time, and here we've got a nice Korean comedy about police officers who buy a restaurant for a stakeout and accidentally turn it into the most popular franchise. Let's get into it, and beware, spoilers ahead. Four criminals sit inside a closed beauty salon, gambling around a table. Suddenly, a foot kicks out a small window fan. And when they get up to investigate, they see Detective Jang outside the window on a rope. One of them says mockingly, if she doesn't have cleaning kit, it means she's not a window cleaner. He realizes that she's a cop. She tells them that she's here to arrest only one of them, the drug dealer, and the other guys can leave. The men pack their items and start getting away from the scene. However, Jang informs the drug dealer that someone is behind the door. Turns out that the two detectives Young Ho and Jae Hoon, nicknamed the newbie, are waiting for the drug dealer to come out. The newbie prepares for the fight, practicing blows. Young Ho tells him that if he screams so loud like Bruce Lee, the drug dealer can expose their ambush. Meanwhile, the criminal opens another window to find the squad captain Ko, also hanging from a rope. Both detectives fail to enter through the window, and the criminal mocks their clumsiness. He explains them how to storm a building. Captain Ko explains that their policy is to minimize property damage. Finally, he manages to get in the building. At the same time, the newbie and young ho start breaching the door. The drug dealer takes his bag and jumps out of the window. Seeing the suspect escape, Ko uses his rope to reach the ground faster, but ends up making a hilariously bad landing. Following this, a hot pursuit ensues. The man tries to steal a car by pulling out the owner, but as soon as he gets into the car, he gets pulled out in the same way. The lady tells him it's not GTA 5 and just drives away. As the criminal tries to escape on foot, Detective Ma suddenly appears on a scooter and starts chasing the dealer. He has warm feelings for Detective Jang, which irritates her. Ma crashes into the man and finally subdues him. Unfortunately, Ma realizes that he forgot to bring the handcuffs. Taking advantage of the opportunity, the drug dealer tases him and starts running away, but soon gets hit by a Hyundai bus. The accident paves way for a chain of other accidents, leaving the detectives stunned. In the next scene, the detectives stand in front of their chief while he reads the case reports. The chief informs them that they decimated a total of 16 cars whose owners are furious at them. He shows them the video of that woman who threw the criminal from her car. To add insult to injury, he also delivers the news that Ko's junior detective Choi has been promoted. Turns out that Choi stopped a major drug deal with his organized crime unit. The other detectives are shocked by the news, telling that Choi is much younger than Captain Ko. The chief asks Ko if he's tired of being captain for so long. When Ko tries to speak, the chief makes them leave the room by throwing things at them. Outside, Jang accuses Detective Ma of budget tampering and tells the others that she will handle finances from now on. Ma tells them that he went undercover in a casino and had to blend it. Suddenly, Jang finds a casino chip inside Ma's pocket, which enrages Ko. He starts punishing the careless Ma for wasting their entire budget when Choi's detective unit smugly passes by. Ko stops him and says they could have collaborated had Choi informed him about the case two months ago. However, Choi reveals that he didn't want to involve them because of their past failures. He also mocks Ko about the recent case. After that, Choi invites everyone to celebrate his promotion with dinner. Later that night, Ko's team joins Choi and his group for a barbecue. While their teams are eating together, Ko looks dejected as he sits with Choi at a different table. There in the name of competition, Choi hands Ko a lead, a drug lord named Mubei, who has started assembling gang members. Choi also informs that Mubei's right-hand man Hong got out of jail six months ago. They assume that he'll resume his crimes. However, he's not done anything suspicious yet. Choi then shows a picture of Hong's recruits to Ko and tells him that Hong might be waiting for Mu Bei's return to Korea from China. With this information, Ko is ready to catch the suspects as he is desperate for a promotion. In the next scene, Ko and his team visit the given address to investigate. Ko, Jang, and Young Ho observe things from afar, whereas the newbie first as a janitor, then as a karateka, then as an electrician nods all the time to Captain Ko and the team. Ma is on a rooftop spying with his binoculars. An old woman spots him and calls the police, mistaking him for a pervert stalking her. Some people take the newbie to a different place, mistaking him for a real builder. 
police officers who were called by the old lady arrive and ask Ko's team to show their IDs. Meanwhile, Mu Bei's gang passes by, and the detectives refuse to show their IDs. The police is about to arrest Ko's team, and only in the car detectives finally show their badges to the police, revealing their true identities. Since the group cannot spy on the suspects from outside, they enter a nearby restaurant to continue their observation. Day changes into night, and they're still eating at the same table without any clues. Ma asks why they always pay for food from of their own pockets. Jang starts yelling at him that this is because he has spent the entire budget on the casino case. They notice Mu Bei outside with his gang, and the whole group hides behind the window. Meanwhile, they get distracted by the restaurant owner, and when they turn back, they find an empty street. This devastates the team as they don't want to hand the case to Choi's unit. They can see through the window how the food delivery man enters the building without any problems. Just then, Ko comes up with a plan. He asks the owner if the goons order any chicken from there, to which he says yes. The team becomes very happy hearing this, but their smiles soon turn into disappointment. When the owner reveals that the goons are his only customers, and hence he's putting the restaurant up for sale, Ko wants to install cameras and other spying equipment inside the goons' apartment. So the cops wonder how to buy the cafe. Ko says that the chief won't give money to their team anymore. The newbie is ready to donate his wedding savings because he doesn't really love his girlfriend. Captain Ko says he's going to withdraw all his life savings secretly from his wife. Later that night, Captain Ko comes home and asks his wife to cook dinner. He gives her the Gucci-branded bag. His wife looks inside, full of hope, expecting to find some Gucci stuff inside, but there are only his dirty clothes. She cuts onions and freaks out that everyone is being promoted, but not her husband who is still a captain, although the retirement is just around the corner. Next morning, the cops gather their savings and buy the restaurant. Soon, the team installs wireless taping devices in the goons' building and starts tracking them. They plan to deliver chicken to the goons and observe the surroundings once they get inside. However, they're disturbed by a flurry of unexpected guests from time to time. Meanwhile, the criminals do nothing suspicious while waiting for Mubei's arrival. Suddenly, there's a quarrel between narcos and thugs in the gang. The cause of the quarrel is the question of who rules the TV remote today, narcs or thugs. Hong comes and gets everyone in a row, after orders them to find out with their fists who will get the TV remote. The criminals take off their shirts, and such an epic fight starts that even in UFC you will not find something like that. The cops start supporting the narcs, and oddly enough, they have won, so the cops rejoice in the victory of the narcs. Hong says that the losers have to buy chicken from the restaurant. Hearing this from the speakers, the detectives panic as they do not have any food in the restaurant. At this moment, the old lady comes in, the same one who accused Ma of stalking her. Seeing him, the lady decides that he is stalking her again. She wants wants to call the police once again. Captain Ko manages to calm her down, informing her that they are now the owners of this cafe. The lady laughs, saying that there was a misunderstanding. She wants to buy a chicken. The cops say that there is no chicken yet. The goons arrive, but the old lady chases them away, telling them to come the next day, as there is no chicken yet. The next day, Ko brings groceries and tells his team that they should prepare the food. He wants everyone to be ready when they receive an order. Since Ma is from Suwon, the birthplace of Friday, chicken, Ko votes for Ma's candidacy. Ma corrects him saying that it's actually the birthplace of ribs. Ko arranges a competition between his colleagues. So every one of them goes to fry chicken. Turns out that Ma's chicken is extremely delicious. He is appointed as chef. Two customers walk into the restaurant and order sticky chicken. Ko and Ma realize that they don't even know how to make a fried chicken sauce. The only sauce Ma knows is marinade for ribs. Left with no choice, Ma prepares fried chicken with marinade. The customers are amazed by the taste of the fresh new formula. The couple shares their impressions on social networks, and now the restaurant is full of people. Undercover cops only have time to serve everyone and fry chicken. They get nervous since they can't do their real job. The cash starts flowing in. Captain Ko comes home and gives his wife a branded Gucci paper bag once again, this time with a real Gucci bag inside. The wife says it's too expensive and finds money inside the bag. She goes to take a quick shower. 
Ko is confused what's going on. Next morning, due to the current turnover, two reporters come to the restaurant and want to report on the fried chicken rib. But Ko rejects their offer, as it might expose their case and chases them away. The humiliated reporter vows revenge. One night, while looking for movements, Young Ho finds Mu Bei getting in a car and tries to alert his team. However, everyone is busy because of a packed restaurant, and no one can get his message. As a result, he decides to follow the cars alone. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, the cars split up at an intersection, leaving Young Ho confused about which car to follow, as he doesn't know which car Mu Bei got inside. He returns to the restaurant furious, but his teammates instead yell at him for not helping in the crowded restaurant. Young Ho gets irritated and tells them about the happenings earlier. He confronts the group, asking if they forgot about their actual purpose there. Hearing this, Ko realizes that they have gone too far into the restaurant business and have to strategize. They increase the price of their menu so that no one visits them anymore. But it backfires. Customers start calling it Emperor Chicken, and the place becomes even more popular. Now every Japanese tourist wants to visit the legendary restaurant. Young Ho continues surveillance and wants advice from his captain, but Ko is too busy with the restaurant and has no time for his subordinate. The criminals don't come at all, so the group once again gets confused about what to do. Ma suggests to offer free chicken as an opening gift with beer and coke mixed with roofies. Ko reminds them they are actually detectives, and this is not their method. A bit later, the chief calls them into his office. He scolds the team for doing nothing but stakeout. As the chief is about to disband the team, Ko suddenly gets a delivery order from the criminal's address. With reinvigorated motivation, the team rushes to the restaurant and prepares food quicker than usual. The team sets off for the delivery, and Ko rings the bell to the building as a delivery man. When the door opens, he only finds that old woman cleaning the room, who tells them that the criminals have already left the place. Back at the restaurant, the cops are dismoraled. Ko states that the chief will disband his team. He starts to laugh at their situation and tells them that the night is their farewell party. He opens up a drink and chugs it when Jang and Ma stop him abruptly. Jang had roofied the drink despite Ko's order. Because of this, Ko slowly loses consciousness and curses at his team when they start to apologize. Sleepy Ko says that he got taste of money and his wife started showering every night and he really loved this life. Before he drops off, he suggests to keep making money with the restaurant. Next morning, the same two reporters who Ko had rejected earlier carry out a secret news coverage and talk badly about the restaurant as their revenge. They say that the price is very high for a restaurant that orders food from somewhere else and sells it as their own. This report causes Ko's team to be suspended. Ko's wife also gets angry at him for cooking chickens rather than being a good cop. She doesn't want to take his dirty money from illegal business. And here we've got the first reference to Breaking Bad. You know Heisenberg was the cook, and now Ko is the cook, like he is doing something illegal. I'm the cook. But then she tells him that she only cares about Ko's safety, not the money. She's ready to start new life and do any job so that he no longer has to cook chicken. The wife offers to run new business with their life savings, but she doesn't know that Ko wasted it buying the restaurant. This makes Ko feel guilty, and he bursts into tears. Watching the news report about the restaurant, Hong tells his boss, Mu Bei, that they had to leave the place due to the crowded restaurant. Another assistant, named Yung, offers to buy their business and run a chain of successful fried chicken restaurants and use it for meth distribution. And here we've got another reference to Breaking Bad. The next day, the team returns to the restaurant to work. Ko needs to keep running the restaurant to make up for his life savings, or else his wife might divorce him. Suddenly, Jung appears in the restaurant and proposes to franchise the business. The group thinks he's a fraud and tries to kick him out, but he offers a massive cash investment, and they finally believe him. In no time, different franchises of the restaurant get established in various places. I'm the cook. Meth, packaged in sauce cans, begins to spread through the restaurants. The team gets suspicious of Young and researches him, but his background clears out. However, the squad sees a piece of news about poorly managed outlets all over social media. The drug dealers do not want to participate in cooking and serving, and often threaten customers and refuse to serve. The criminals literally act like goons with customers. Because of this, the detective squad starts to investigate in detail. Upon research, they learn that although the restaurants are always empty, the pickup orders are enormous. They see the delivery boys carrying too many items at a time, which adds to their suspicion, and they start to follow 
follow them. They see customers taking something out of their orders and throwing the rest away. Ko follows a shipper to investigate and orders Zhang and Ma to look after other locations. Soon, he witnesses a conflict between a customer and a delivery man who leaves the place without giving the former his order. Taking advantage of the opportunity, Ko goes to the customer and learns that the franchise is a cover-up for drug trafficking. Meanwhile, Mu Bei asks Hong how the work is going. The henchman tells that their only concern is Ted Chang might attack. Mu Bei goes to talk to his ex-partner and now the main rival Ted Chang to patch things up. His bodyguard knocks everyone in their way, clearing the way for her boss. They approach Ted Chang. Mu Bei offers to work together. He'll give him the distribution in Korea, while he himself will supply the chain from China. It turns out that Mu Bei is originally from China, but Chang does not trust Mu Bei since he has already framed him once. Mu Bei offers him to look at his distribution business. On the other hand, Detective Ma reaches a restaurant where he finds the criminals gambling and joins them. To be discreet, the criminals start talking in Chinese about their dirty business, thinking that Ma does not understand them. But an overconfident Ma does the same blowing his cover. The criminals didn't expect him to understand them all the time. The thugs beat him up and escort him to Mu Bei, who discovers that Ma is a detective. Hong immediately reminds whose idea it was with this restaurant business and starts beating Young with his crutch. Mu Bei orders him to do nothing until the bargain is complete. He plans to use Detective Ma as bait to kill the other cops and put the blame on Ted Chang. He orders Hong to keep an eye on the cop. Meanwhile, the rest of the team goes to Young's office for information, only to find it empty. Suddenly, Jang receives a video call from Ma's phone. She answers it and sees an injured Ma tied to a chair. The criminals then tell the squad to arrive at said location if they want to save Ma. Hearing this, Jang opens the Find Your Husband app, which she previously installed on Ma's phone, to find his real location. It surprises Ko and Young Ho, but they decide to ignore it and follow Jang. The criminals go to Hong's place for the money, because after killing the cops, they will have to hide. At the house, they are intercepted by Choi and his squad. Hong orders to kill them. A fight begins. Hong takes the money and leaves with his men. Choi and his colleagues lie beaten on the ground. Choi aims at their car when suddenly a Hyundai bus crashes into the car. On the other hand, the criminals dig up a hole to bury Ma and Young. Ma regains consciousness, and one of the criminals is about to knock him out. But he fights back. During the fight, Ma manages to demonstrate a bunch of brilliant takedowns. After winning the fight, Ma proudly declares that he was on the national judo team, but no one believes it. Young rejoices in his victory and shows Ma to untie him. But Ma states that they are not on the same side, despite being tied up together. And Ma performs the legendary Stockton slap. After this, he sees a truck leaving the site and clings on to it. The truck passes the squad's car, but they miss each other. In the next scene, the truck reaches a harbor, and Detective Ma witnesses a deal about to happen between Mu Bei and Ted Chang. Seeing that the transaction is about to be complete, Ma turns on the police siren on his Samsung Galaxy to scare them. Mu Bei suspects that Chang called the police and shoots him in anger. Because of this, both sides start attacking one another. Meanwhile, the detective squad finally arrives at the site. Ko takes a picture of the gangsters and sends it to Choi, who interrogates Hong. At the harbor, when the criminals see only five detectives, they stop fighting and get ready to face them. However, the team is unfaced and takes on the large criminal group. Elsewhere, Choi rushes to the site. His men believe that Ko's team will soon be outnumbered, but Choi is confident in their abilities. He reveals that the group of five is special. Ma is an ex-judo national athlete. Young Ho used to be in the underwater demolition team, and as rumors tell, he's killed people. Zhang is an experienced Muay Thai champion. She was nicknamed Zhang Bak after Ong Bak. And the newbie is an ex-baseball player who has developed resilience to blows. Finally, Choi reveals that Detective Ko is nicknamed the zombie as he survived being stabbed 12 times while in the major crimes division. As the squad is fighting with Mu Bei's gang, Mu Bei takes the opportunity to run away with his assistant. Detective Ko runs after them, but Mu Bei's assistant stops him. Just then, Jang comes to the rescue and attacks her. After an intense fight, she finally manages to subdue the villain. Meanwhile, Mu Bei flees the scene on a boat, leaving his assistant behind. Suddenly, Detective Ko appears on the ship, flashing in the background like a zombie in a horror movie. He attacks Mu Bei. Both of them knock each other out, but Ko gets up quicker, moving like a real zombie which scares Mu Bei. 
After a while, Choi arrives with backup only to find the criminals tied up on the ground and Detective Ko's team posing as winners. As the movie ends, the detective squad is honored publicly with each member promoted to a higher rank. So, what do you guys think about this movie? Do you like Korean movies? And that was all for today. If you enjoy it, please leave your likes and subscribe to my channel for more content like this.